So we are here for our lovely Thursday coffee chats, which I love. It's sunny in the UK for once. We're making the most of it. And I've got my lemon and cucumber water. How are you doing, Bryce? It's sunny in Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> too, but we're not caught hot Atlanta for nothing. Um, but I'm so happy it's sunny for you. I love when I get to talk to you during the day and I see the sun coming through. You guys have no idea how much of a rock star Catherine actually is because we're dealing with like a thousand different time zones sometimes and poor Catherine sometimes it's like late at night and you're in your office doing these these interviews and so and that's hard to do when your family's like chilling out and watching you know and you're doing and so you guys Catherine is truly a rock star and it's a pleasure to see you in the sunny daylight at a normal time I was just um I was just talking today from Danny, the spiritual therapist, who you and I are going to be doing a round table with. And because trying to work out all the, we were trying to work out all the time zones and everything. But actually, I'm going to do a channel update probably next week for all our listeners because, you know, I'm changing. Well, I'm, I'm moving into, you know, continuing with the new direction that I've been moving into, which we're going to talk about today. But it's interesting you bring up the family because I'm going to try and make sure I keep you know, a bit more balance in there because the family times in the evenings are really important. But we've got something, we, you and I had the most amazing chat with Nick Alvia from Good Lion TV yesterday, which we loved, didn't we? And we've got a follow on subject from that chat, really. I, that was one, of, I actually sometimes one of the most beautiful aspects of running these and why I started my channel to begin with is to be able to listen and talk to other people too. And yeah, he, he, I've had so many people contact me and I have not loaded it to my, as you guys know, last night I got kicked off. So, um, Catherine had to send it to me. So it should be up on my channel later today. But, um, so many people have messaged me today that they watched it on your channel and a lot of their questions they had regarding meditation were actually answered last night questions. Some of them didn't even know they had. And that's the beautiful thing I think Nick, Nick brought to the conversation too, was his experience and the teachings and some of them, and, and he brought up like, you know, how different aspects of the meditation. And I would love to do a follow-up with him a part two, because um, it's totally a side to him that I don't think a lot of people have seen. And and now you guys know why he's so chill and calm and cool and collective is because he's really worked on himself and, um, and it shows. So I, I just had so much fun last night and it, it brought up what we're going to talk about today because Nick talked a lot about finding your sovereignty which is something you and I have spoken about and why I think we're trying to move more in this direction is because um, we've been in such a weird uh, matrix for so long that I think a lot of people have forgotten what their sovereignty is and have allowed people to control them. And part of the spiritual practice is learning how to put up boundaries sometimes. And so that's why we're going to go a little deeper in that today. Yeah, it's such an important subject and one that you and I talk about a lot because, um, you know, following up from what you were saying about Nick's experience and because he's actually done the, so much of the work and now he's able to bring it into all aspects of his life. Um, I was having a conversation with my daughter today when we were out walking um, the horses about this. And, and, and it's so interesting because there's so many things that we can learn from um, from watching how animals respond to that, um, watching how we apply these principles in all different areas of our lives. So I think this is a, a really important conversation to have. And I think people will find it really, really useful. I hope you will find it useful. I'm sure you'll tell us in the comments below whether you do or not. It was so, yeah, so yeah, what we're going to talk about is the bite model. And I'm going to give you guys, I know you, some of you guys know that for me, I went through a, um, an abusive relationship in my uh, early thirties, uh, a narcissistic, um, it, it was really, really bad. I almost lost my life one night. It, it got really bad. And, um, as I've told, talked to with our friend Shanti about the alchemy of turning lead into gold, I would not change that for the world. What happened to me because I went through trauma therapy and through trauma therapy on top of my yoga practice, I learned a lot about myself and I also learned a lot about mind control. And mm -hmm. when we're looking at cults specifically, that's what we think about when we think about mind control, but we also see it in individual relationships as well. And one of the most concerning things, we're at a very crucial point right now in humanity's collective consciousness. And, you know, as our friend Shanti says, we have to transform or die. And what I'm seeing at a lot of people, especially being on this side of the YouTube um, battlefield, we'll say, is this um, 
almost like this hero worship when it comes to certain truthers in our community. I know we've talked about it, and that makes me uncomfortable with myself because I'm just a girl from Georgia. Like I am just a human being riding this roller coaster with you all. And I open my platform to have a place. I like weird stories to share these stories and communicate with everybody. Um, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be seen as a, I just, that makes me uncomfortable when people start to put their whole um, opinions and identity into somebody else to lead them. This is how we got into the position we got in with the mainstream media and we know how that's worked out for us. And so there's this man named Dr. Stephen Hassan. Now, Dr. Stephen Hassan created this, what we call this bite model, which is like, a, it's like a model you can use to kind of check yourself. And he, he, he created it for cults. So you can be able to see if somebody is in a high um, control religion or whatever. Now, the one thing I'm going to say first about Dr. Hassan is that he is not a fan of Mr. T. He thinks all of the things that we know to be true are um, not true. However, as I was telling Catherine, I don't like to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And because Dr. Stephen Hassan was in the Moonies, I don't know if anybody knows about the Moonies. They're a big group here. Uh, and he got himself out of it, hence why he is now um, kind of a a behavioral specialist when it comes to this stuff. I think a lot of, in my opinion, his own trauma from being in an organization has, has kind of fed into his fear of, of maybe the great awakening. I hope that makes sense. So I don't want people to freak out about that because again, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bath water because in my opinion, the bite model is amazing. And again, this model isn't, isn't just about, um, organizations this can work for people in your life too if you have highly controllable people in your life and so i just pulled up this one website because this guy does a really good job kind of summing it up and the bite model stands for behavior information thought and emotional control okay so these are according to uh dr hassan these are the four pillars which puts you into a position of being vulnerable to a person that's going to try to control you or an organization. Now I want to make it perfectly clear. And I think a lot of people who are cult specialists um, or specialists with people who are coming out of abusive relationships, anybody at any point of their life can be su uh, susceptible to this, especially yeah. if you're in a vulnerable place. Some of the smartest people out there have ended up in these situations. They catch you with vulnerability. And that's another reason why what, when we talk about the meditation, all that kind of stuff is super important because it helps you maintain your sovereignty. And so they kind of go through, you know, uh, constructive to, to constructive, to destructive, healthy to un unhealthy, like for individuals, we have the authentic self versus the false identity, which, which is the unhealthy, which is the ego, um, unconditional love to conditional love, compassion to hate, conscious to doctrine, um, creativity and humor to fear and guilt. Anyway, it goes down for leaders, um, psychologically healthy, knows their own limits, empowers other, others trustworthy, accountable to narcissistic, psychopaths, elitist, grandiose, power hungry, secretive, deceptive, claims absolute authority. Um, for organizations, we have, um, you, know, you guys see it, uh, checks and balances to authoritarian structure, um, informed consent, deceptive, manipulative, um, individuality diversity clones people uh not literally we're talking in that says makes people just behave the same right um encourages growth uh preserves one owns owns, owns power but when we get down to this bite model of mind control and i'll put a link to this down in the description box guys so you can look at it for yourself this is where i think it gets super interesting because it breaks down even more so when we look at behavior control instills dependency and obedience this mm. to me, here we go right here, instills dependency and obedience. And so what I would ask for viewers to, to ask themselves, and this is something I ask myself all the time, um, because I have been through this. And so I don't want to go back. I want to grow and learn from past mistakes. Are you totally dependent upon a particular person in your life, be it a person in your physical life or someone on YouTube? And do you feel like you have to be obedient to that person? For example, if you're, Catherine, we've talked about this a lot. If you're in a true healthy relationship with somebody, regardless of whether that's a friendship, romantic, you should be able to have difficult conversations with that person without losing the friendship or the relationship. 
That's, and that's one thing I really want to pick up on, Bryce, because I think it's really, really important because, um, you know, you and I do talk about this a lot and it, sometimes it's quite difficult because I find it quite difficult for the listeners to remember what we've said on camera. And of course, the people won't be watching all our videos, quite rightly so, and what we've said off camera. But this honest and open, authentic discussions is so, so important. But also, like you've just mentioned, and I mention all the time, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You know, it's having balance and... The other thing I think comes into this is expectations. What are your expectations of people? And are you projecting your expectations onto others? And are other people that you're listening to projecting your expectations on, on them? So, for example, I've heard quite a few people say, Liz, we're just taking YouTube as an example here. I've had people almost shaming people uh, in their, their discussions were sort of saying, well, of course, if you don't think this, then you're obviously not awake or you're obviously 3D or obviously this or that. And that's sort of almost shaming people into not agreeing with their point of view. So I think this is such an important issue. And, and as you say, you and I, these are checklists that we employ in our daily life. And we're really happy when our friends point those out to us as well, aren't we? You know, yeah, I mean, that's... Point out when you're over, when you're not. In line. And that's, and that's part of the, the, that's part of your job as a friend. I talk about this with teachers too. One of my main jobs as a yoga teacher, as mainly philosophy teacher, is to, um, it's the hardest job I have, is to call people on their bullshit. And to, yeah. and to show them where their blind spots are, because blind spots are the ego. But if you don't feel like you can do that, then you're falling into life of behavior control, which is obedience. And so you have to ask yourself, is that a healthy position for you to be in? I don't yeah. There's not one person in my life that I agree with 100% on everything, nor do I want there to be. But I don't have to be my friends don't have to be exactly like me. They don't have to think exactly like me. I like learning from people. And, and, and with good friendships where you feel are ro ro romantic relationships or with an organization, when you feel like you can authentically be yourself, like we saw up top and express your opinions, even if they're different from someone else's and you don't feel like you're going to lose the love, that conditional love versus unconditional love of your friends, then you're in a healthy place. But if you feel like you can't say something, I mean, look at what all of us have faced with the backlash from the other side of this. We've all been ostracized. We can't then start doing that within our own community because somebody doesn't like this truther or somebody believes this truther over that truther. That is cult behavior. That's toxic. We, we need to find that sovereignty with, and be okay with people having a different opinion. We need to be okay with that. That's healthy. That's very, very healthy. Like it goes and in here. This is, what, this is where you see quite a lot in either the discussions or most of the comments when people are trying to really convince someone. I, I had a, a really good interview with Laura Logan, the um, journalist, the war correspondent journalist, and she summed it up beautifully. She said, my job as a journalist is to report the information, not to try and coerce and influence people to believe my point of view. Now, I know when perhaps, say, for example, we've got channels, we are discussing our point of view, but yeah. we're not attached to anyone believing in it. Yeah. However, what I don't like is when I see people start leaving negative comments to other people and telling them they're wrong for having a particular point of view. Because, again, it's like using your discernment and deciding when to listen, when to step away. When it's serving you, is it uplifting you? Is it giving you a warm feeling? Is it making you cold and making you feel low or doubt yourself? And really tuning in. And, and, and as you were saying, this really links back into why we're talking about things like meditation, knowing yourself, tuning in with your intuition, looking after your physical mod body, your emotional body, your spiritual self. Because when you're keeping yourself as much in balance, you're not going to succumb to influences and coercion and you shouldn't feel like you've got to be part of a club you shouldn't feel that you can't like this person because you listen to that person exactly exactly and that comes with a modifier behavior with rewards and punishments like if you feel yeah. like you're going to be rewarded or punished for thinking differently then you're not in a healthy relationship or group 
Um, it goes, I mean, this kind of like dictate where and with whom you live that gets more into the organizational con control, but, um, and you guys can read more about that, but then you, you get, um, Oh, this is a big one for it deprives you of seven to nine hours of sleep each night. Okay. That's a big one for abusive relationships too. Uh, for some reason, these, um, people who want to control will start to pull sleep away from you. So if you're, even if you're in personal life, if you're with someone or dating someone or that's constantly like trying to wake you up at night and talk to you and make you feel like you, they're doing that intentionally that's to sleep deprive you so that you're not thinking logically that you're not, you know, nor, I mean, everybody knows that I go to bed super early because I get up really early in the morning and, and all of my friends know that. And like, respect that. And if I get a text, they know I'm not going to text back until I wake up in the morning, you know, like, and that's fine because that's a healthy relationship. Exploit you financially. That's a big one that I'm seeing in the truth or movement as well. And that yeah. makes me uncomfortable. I mean, we, we all we're Catherine and I both monetized. We absolutely need the income we get off of YouTube, but it's not, that's not exploitation. That's coming through AdSense, you know, patrons. Those are things that people volunteer to do. But when you feel like you're being exploited, that's behavior control. And so you, you need to kind of sit with that. Um, so let's go well, over to fear into it. So for, again, a lot of, a lot of people will talk about, um, you know, products to help the health side of things, training courses, because another thing we're going to be speaking to Nick about is the importance of a, a teacher at various stages in your life. So if there's, if there's choice and people are bringing stuff to you, with a genuine will to add choice to your life, to take back control and you decide whether this is something that resonates with you or not, that to me is really different to fear tactics that you might see at the end of a Tony Robbins event. And, yeah. and I'm picking on Tony Robbins, like, oh, you have to sign up today, otherwise it's too late. You know, any time where there's a fear tactic employed to sort of say, you've got to do it now or it's too late, to me, is overstepping the boundary. It's behavior control at that point. I agree with you because there are a lot of, you know, um, I, you know, I, I spend money. It costs me money to go study with my teacher in India. And like when Nick was talking about Vipassana sitting for meditation, yes, in those situations, you are provided a housing, all that kind of stuff because it goes with the territory. With my teacher, though, because it's it's a different school, we're, we're not provided housing. We have to get our own housing. We're not yeah. provided food. We have to get our own food because it's, you know, and, and I prefer it that way. People are like, oh, and I'm like, no, 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 because that shows that my teacher is not trying to control us. He's running it as a school period. You know, we have to fend for ourselves regardless. And so, yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely in like, you know, our students, uh, my students who pay for my, my, my courses at AYA, I'm not, I'm there to teach them what I know and give them a course and give them accountability, but I'm not there to tell them what to eat, how to sleep, what to do this or who to date. You know, that's, that's, that's not my business. And so that's a huge thing to look for. If you are, if you feel in any situation, if you feel like you have to do something in mm. order to maintain that relationship, whether it be in your private life, in your public life, on YouTube, off of YouTube, that is a huge red flag. That is a huge red flag. And when it comes to like the fear tactics used for behavioral control, I'm going to tell you guys that you should not be afraid. You are enough. You don't need to buy this to be enough, to do that, to be enough. You are already enough. And when, when products are being sold to help you, there are actual products there and you have that choice. No one's going to force you into it. I hope that makes sense. And there, I think most people yeah, understand. I just that. think it's an important sort of, you know, distinction because we all do need things. I mean, Bryce and I spend, have spent huge amounts of money on self-development and my self-development takes so many different forms depending what my priorities are at the moment it might be a course that I want to enroll in or it might be some coaching or it might be some physical products that I need to bring my body back into balance or it might be some detoxification and, and then I, I will have the same things going on with my animals as well um, but again it's like what I, I find really worrying is when I see people employing fear tactics and then I like is this really serving people um you know it, it's just being aware of it and noticing it and noticing how it makes you feel do yeah. you feel that desperation or do you feel empowered by making a choice yeah do you think that person is still going to love you or like you if you say no yeah right 
that and that's and I hope I think people understand the difference between that yes. um, the manipulation versus just the gen genuine business right um, information control. This is a big one deliberately withholds and distorts information. And we've seen this on a macro scale. And I'll be honest with you guys. Like when I do deep dives on my channel, I'm always worried that there's some information I've missed and therefore it's going to distort someone's view of the story or, or maybe has distorted my view of the story. Hence why I Often you'll hear me say, if you know something else, please put it in the comment section below, because I consider the comment section to be part of the video, right? So when you guys are commenting, you're part of the story too, because um, we never want to withhold information from people. That's manipulation, especially when you know, and, and we see that big time with big high, high group organiz high control organizations. You also notice this with uh, relationships that are toxic. Um, information will be withheld intentionally, which, you know, it, it goes back and forth. Is that lying? It just depends. But if you're withholding information int intentionally that, you know, will give somebody more clarification or perhaps is going to change their mind, then you are manipulating that person. And that's not okay. Um, forbid you for communicating with ex members and critics. So again, that that's big with um, organizations, but on your personal level, are there people in your life that won't let you talk to other friends? Have you ever been in a relationship with someone or a friendship with somebody where all of a sudden you are made to feel guilty for maintaining a friendship with someone else? That's not okay. Cause that's, because there's a reason why they don't want you talking to that person. And it might have to do with information control um, or uh, restrict uh, restricts access to non cult sources of information. That kind of goes with the same thing. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see anything that's more. We'll go ahead and move down to thought control. Um, Cause you guys can, I'm, again, I'm going to put this link down in the description box. So you can pull all this up yourself to keep, I keep this on hand for myself too. Um, so teaches you to internalize group doc doctrine as truth, right? Mm -hmm. We see this big time on the macro with what's going on in the world. We can't say too much because of censorship. So we kind of understand that, but it kind of goes back to me again, to that behavior control where you uh, instill dependency and obedience, right? When you see whatever that person said has to be the truth versus just a perspective of the truth or an opinion of the truth. Yeah. And this is big. So this is huge. In, um, in my trauma therapy, we talked about this a lot. Install black versus white, us versus them, good versus evil thinking. This is a huge red flag. I know from, again, from my trauma therapy before I was even on YouTube, when somebody has the black and white thinking, you're either all good, you paint someone, paint someone all good or all bad. And I think Catherine, we've said before, maybe I don't, on, ca on camera or off camera, that human beings are shades of gray, always yeah. shades of gray. Right. And we've all, I think we've all been drawn into this quite a lot. And I mean, look at what this is taught to the first one here about group, group doctrines such as truth. Well, this this is widely known as the truther community and doesn't that say it at all because we, we you, we've had lots of discussions and we've changed the way that we've chosen to work over the last year because when you know better you do better so we've taken it away from talking about individuals of public figures and things because we haven't met them perfectly personally we don't know what it is and and there's so many things going around that is 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 put across as the absolute truth yeah when in and reality half of it is just junk conspiracy they don't see things and again i see it a lot in the comments where almost some people are shaming others by saying well no this is that and it's like well that's your opinion and you are absolutely entitled to your opinion but most of it, we don't know whether it is absolutely true or not at the moment. And therefore, to not keep an open mind and keep those discussions and allow other people to have other versions of their truth is not healthy. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know we've talked about this, Catherine. I know there are a lot of people who are alive that um, that we thought were gone, but I don't think they're all alive. Yeah, I think there's some that ha that's why that's another reason why I don't want to talk about individuals anymore, because that's traumatic to create a story around someone who has children and they might not be alive. We don't know for sure. And so I want to respect those boundaries. And um, 
you know, we see this with uh, with even celebrities. People paint this one completely black. They're completely evil or completely white. You see it with truthers. They're, this this person is completely bad. And this can't people just be people? You know. Yes. And so we, we have to be very very careful about this. And when you start to, for, in in my experience anyway, when I started to catch myself with this kind of stuff, then um, then I um, I st- started to have more compassion for people. When I started to really catch myself painting people black or white, I started to find more humanity in other people. And that's just something I noticed within myself. And I really, I really hope that people will take this into consideration, this black and white thinking. It can cause too, it can call, push the brain into like a, a mental disorder as well, like can go into more borderline stuff like that. And that's something we, we, do, we want to be able to stand in that sovereignty. We don't want to have to change our brain so much to go from one organization of control to another one. You know, yeah. Um, change your identity, possibly even your name. I, 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 I will take the name thing off because we're talking about just individuals here. But has you know, if you you felt like you can't be yourself, if you have to, um, you know, I know a big one is like if you're, and this is not even with the truther community. If you're like dating a new person and you feel like you have to like everything they like, or you feel like, and that's just that's something I would do in like my early twenties at this point. No, if they don't like you for you, then don't change yourself because that again goes from thought control all the way back to behavior control again. And that's toxic. Um, let's see here. If there's any, let's see, let's go over here to, um, Oh, here we go. I like this last one rejects rational analysis, critical thinking and constructive criticism. That is something that I feel like a lot of people, even in the truth or community have a problem with. I, I, I so agree. And, you know, we, we're looking for, I mean, my whole, the purpose of my channel was to expand consciousness through curiosity. And that covers a whole range of subjects. I want critical thinking. I want people on there that are going to challenge my way of thinking. I want people there. Now, of course, I'm not going to get, I'm, I'm not going to waste my precious time and life with someone that I absolutely do not resonate with. Right. Because from there, you know, there's going to be certain people quite rightly that you choose not to spend your time with. Um, But equally, if people are just falling into that sort of hero worship, I agree with absolutely everything you say. If there's anyone in your life where you agree with absolutely everything they say, I would be questioning that big time. Yeah, even I guess my cat, I still have disagreements with, and he's as perfect as you can get. I, you know, I, I, I critically think on myself too. There's so many, and I haven't taken, you know, the only videos that have been taken down off my channel are videos you took, YouTube took off my channel. I have a lot of videos left on my channel from a year ago where my opinion has completely changed. And I've left all that up because I'm a human being and I'm on this journey with everyone. I thought for the longest time that if we were looking at the book of Revelation, that we were in the apocalypse. And it wasn't until I found Tartaria and sat with it for a while that my opinion changed. And so that's okay, though. And and, and anybody that's going to not allow you to critically think, there's a problem there. There's a problem with that. Or if someone's not going to let you challenge their beliefs, there's a huge problem with that. When your beliefs are challenged, that's when your beliefs expand, you know, and that's, and that's just, regardless of whether it's an organization or if it's one person, that's a major red flag. And just be, I mean, that's what the um, other side of this, this uh, battle is doing right with, with, we see again, like I said, all the videos off my channel have been taken down from the, the, the platform. That's what they're doing. They're stopping that. So, so why would then we in, bring it into our community too. People are missing the point because it looks different. It has a different color to it, you know, but it's the same thing. It's thought control. It's, it's, it's not allowing people the freedom to generate their own opinions off of their own critical thinking. Um, and the next one, I really, this is the emotional control. And this is where this to me is the big one. And maybe yeah. that's because I'm an emotional person. I mean, it, Y'all, me too. my, my me Madeline too. series, I can't make it through one video without freaking crying on camera because I am an emotional person. And I, I feel like, you know, I, my, I remember my trauma therapist telling me once that my biggest problem was, was that I have a very tender heart. It's easy for me to forgive. And mm-hmm. I had, and, and I remember her saying like, 
you need to keep that, keep that quality, but understand it about yourself so that you don't fall into this again, because you do have a tender heart. So emotional control um, instills irrational fears of questioning or leaving the group or a person. They call this phobia indoctrination, that if you start questioning this person, then all of a sudden you're going to be out, you know, you're going to be kicked out of the club or whatever. Um, I don't feel like I don't ever want to form a club. I feel like we're just humans trying to evolve together. We're all walk walking each other home together. I don't feel like this is a, a club. And if someone makes you feel like that, um, then there's an issue there. It's emotional control. Makes you feel elitist and special love bombing. Guys, this is a big one. If anybody takes anything away from this conversation, love bombing. I see it from platform uh, content creators and from people in the comment section sometimes so you need to be aware when it's happening to you and you need to be aware when you find yourself trying it to do it to someone else you know be kind to people if you if you respect them and you think they're cool you can co absolutely compliment them. that kindness is what changes our vibration but don't do it to manipulate and when it comes yes. to like relationships it it um like we'll talk about love relationships if you meet someone and all of a sudden they're like in love with you and want to move in with you and marry you, that's a red flag. It takes time for, for things to unfold. It takes time for that to grow. And that's healthy. Same with friendships. It takes, I mean, Catherine, you and I have gone, gotten really close over these last three months, but we had known each other for a while. It takes time for all those things to happen. Um, promotes feelings of guilt, shame, or unworthiness. So if you're with someone that makes you feel bad because you have a different opinion or tries to shame you, that's emotional control. All right. Label some emotions as evil, worldly, sinful, or wrong. We've all experienced that before. Hello from those of us who grew up in a church. I was just about to say that, you know, so that just has a lot of religious connotations. Yeah. yeah and so, but we see that coming from um, our community as well. That if you don't believe this one thing, then that's evil and you're just wrong. You know, that's emotional control. Um, teach emotion stopping techniques to prevent anger or homesickness. So if, some, you know, you're, you're teaching someone to like ignore their own intuition, really, when that stuff comes up, that their own gut telling them something when you're, you're teaching them not to do, to do that. And that, you know, that's one thing I, I, I loved how we talked about with Nick last night with meditation. And I loved, he brought it up the discomfort of actually leaning into that because sometimes I think people, even in a spiritual world, people think that spirituality is all about high vibration and just light and love. But most spirituality brings you to other utter darkness because you're having to deal with yourself and you're having to go through these feelings inside of you. And so you don't need to ignore that. Um, threatens and harasses your family and friends that usually comes from actual organizations. Um, I think if you have a friend or a person in your life doing that singular, you would see that red flag and be like, that's not normal. <laughs> um, shuns you if you disobey or disbelieve. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? I think that's we've a, both experienced that. We both have experienced that. That's emotional control. Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to fall in line to serve what my ego wants you to wants to believe, and you're you're going to be shunned. Yeah, yeah. So teach you that there is no happiness or fulfillment outside of the group. Um, which again, I think, I think that, yeah, I want to talk about that one a bit because again, we've seen over the last two years, and again, I'll be careful how I say this because of the censorship, but we've seen this on a macro scale big time with people shaming that they're going to damage grandparents if they go near them and, um, you know, I, I encourage the isolation and things like that. But we've also seen it in terms of, I think, a lot of the communities that have been on YouTube where it's almost been really looking to disrespect people that have got different views to ourselves Yes. So, you know, if family members don't believe in certain things that you might believe in, it's almost encouraging that disrespect. And it's just like, my goodness, it's, you can't solve the problem from the same consciousness that it's created with. And, and so if we're just behaving just as badly as everything we're criticizing on a macro scale, how is that ever going to move things forward? Exactly. Exactly. And that, that goes back to the whole idea of cancel culture, too. That's what cancel culture is. 
And we can't, we can't be on our high horses saying that that's wrong, but then also doing it ourselves. We can't be, you know, and everybody has a little wiggle room for being a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites at times, yes. right? Do as I do, as I say, not as I do, right? My parents used to say that to us a lot um, because we know we're going to be hypocritical. But the thing is, is that we, if we, if we're, if we're going to put ourselves as being on the side of good, then we have to be aware of that within ourselves, that we have that propensity. And therefore we need to have self-reflection, self-control. And if we see ourselves being hypocritical, we need to do our best individually to course correct. You know, it's, it's, um, it, it, and as I said, I mean, my, therapist told me I was very tenderhearted and I forgave very easily. And that's why I got myself into these kinds of messes, but we, we need to be, um, course correcting and then forgiving ourselves and then trying not to be that way with, within our own community. You know, when your opinion is challenged, you don't need to react out of anger. Just let it be challenged. That's, that's part of, of us growing. And, and I've said this on my channel a lot is as far as like information is concerned, a lot of us don't have access to any more information than the people watching us do. I have one military insider that I've gotten some information from, and I've said that, and I'm not going to share what he sends me because I don't want to get him in trouble, but I do try to read through it and, and digest it and figure out a way to present it in a way that I can give some type of, of backing. And if I can't, I just say it's just speculation and opinion. Um, but when we, when we try to I don't know, keep people in this bubble of believing one narrative, one narrative. Life is way too complicated to have this one narrative. The truth of what we're all going through is so, so many levels that for us to ostracize other people, we're no better than Anderson Cooper or, you know, see, you know, we exactly. just have to, we have to watch that. We, we have to, we have to check ourselves. We have to, to work on ourselves. And, and again, yeah, when I go through the bike control with myself, it, it's not just checking for people in my life. It's also checking myself too. Like, am I doing any of this? Am I doing anything like this that is not healthy and is possibly toxic? And how can I correct it if I am? And so I'm hoping that people watching will incorporate some of this stuff as well and maybe stop putting themselves in a position to be vulnerable to being controlled again, if that makes sense. And I think, you know, a lot of it goes back to how, what, what is the purpose of what you're trying to communicate? Are you trying to communicate something to add value in some way? Or are you trying to communicate something to make someone feel a negative side of things because social media has got so many benefits and so many disadvantages and we've seen that a lot of youngsters I sound really old now saying that but we've seen that a lot of youngsters can have a lot of problems because a lot of people would write something on a screen on social media on Instagram on Facebook on YouTube that they would never say to someone's face and my general rule is whether I'm having a discussion on camera or online or that if you if you but always speak to people in a way one that you would want someone to speak to you and don't ever say anything sort of online that you wouldn't say to someone face to face and feel happy with the way that you're conducting yourself and of course as you say there are always hypocrites we're all going to react to certain things and have different triggers that's life but if you do notice you're doing something like that there's a simple word and it's sorry yeah I love one of my favorite quotes is, is a true, true, true character is what you do when no one is watching. Mm. You know, I've, I've had people get mad at me because like my social media, my Twitter account, I share truth, but I also share other stuff too. But that's just me, who I am. And, and if people have gotten mad, like you should only be posting this stuff because you have a platform. No, I shouldn't. If I see a funny meme, I'm going to share it because it made me laugh and hopefully it'll make somebody else laugh too. Because life is more is has more layers than that. Um, a while ago, I had somebody get on my comments on my Monday mystery and basically try to shame me that I shouldn't be doing Monday mystery anymore because I should be focused on what's happening in the here and now. And I just calmly responded that my my strength is research. There's so many truthers out there that are really good with the daily upkeep of what's happening, and my but my strength is research. 
Yeah. And the Monday mystery, if it's a missing person, we're honoring that person. If it's like a weird folklore legend, it just gives us a, a way to look at it differently. It's, is it more there, there than we thought before? And it also gives people something else to think about for a minute um, while we're going through this crazy life of ours. And, um, and so, but that reaction in itself to try to shame me and control me and what I do on my platform by trying to manipulate because I'm a truther isn't okay. And That's we're not part of control. Control. So not that as well. And and life is all about balance. And you know, is it is it helpful? How much does it serve people just concentrating on what they know? Because a lot of the stuff that we think we know, we don't know. And we're gonna find out that part of the life. It's you know, that is part of this wonderful journey we're on. And I think is finding the right balance for you and accepting that that balance can change on a daily place, a basis, you know, sort of where I was at and where I wanted to spend my time a year ago is very different to where I want to spend my time right here, right now. And that's because I've assimilated a lot of information. I've processed a lot of it. I've worked out what resonates with me, what doesn't. I've worked out how much I need to know about certain things. So there's things that I'm really passionate and interested in. Other people aren't interested in at all. So, you know, you and I have both got a huge variety of different things on our channels because that reflects our personalities. And some people will resonate with and others they won't resonate with at all. And that's the same when I'm listening to people or when I'm reading a book, you know, I can read a book by one of my favorite authors, but I don't have to agree with everything in the book. And there might be some chapters I want to read twice and others that I just want to skim over. A good example is what we just looked at the bite model by Dr. Stephen Hassan, who thinks we're freaking crazy for, for yeah. being the Great Awakening, but I still like his bite model. I still appreciate exactly. it. I think his bite model is brilliant. You know, that's that again goes to that black and white thinking of being like, I can appreciate even though I don't agree with you in this area, I can appreciate this work you've done here. And I see that's again, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So, but how many people in our community wouldn't even look at the bite model because he doesn't agree with us on what's happening in the world right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we have to, we, we, it's basically like, I guess the motto is like, in my opinion, don't try to control other people and don't let other people control you as Nick's kept talked about a lot in the, yesterday's uh, episode about finding your sovereignty, being in your sovereignty, being you and the people that are meant to be in your life that are uh, meant to love you and to truly love you, whether that's a friendship, a partner, whatever, um, they're going to accept you for being different, for not for disagreeing with some stuff. You know, do you remember back when I was a kid anyway, like when people, when friends had different opinions on something, they would tease each other about it. Exactly. Now you're not allowed to tease anyone about it. <laughs> now you just can't be friends. You have to cancel them, cancel them, you know? So yeah, absolutely. Let's, go back to, let's go back to just teasing each other about our differences, opinions, you know, like, let's just go back to that. And, and cause that, that was way more fun and way more loving to be in that, that space than having to be so controlled and, um, and all that kind of stuff. So I really hope, and especially for, you know, if you find yourself, lionizing another truth or just just check yourself you know we're all i promise you i i think Kathy and i know know a lot of the truthers personally we're all just human beings we're we, just human beings we all go to the toilet we all <laughs> there are noses we've all got <laughs> you know we've all got good points bad points and we're all on a journey ourselves as well you know that's so important to remember is we're all on a journey ourselves and we're all going to have good days and bad days and you know, yeah. we've chosen to come back in a human body this time. So still don't know. know why I did that, but <laughs> I don't still know. Why. That I, I, I do quite like it because I can have the cats on my lap then. So <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to lionize your cats. That's, yes, that's I lionize my dog. My dog is yeah. he can do no that's wrong. Fine. Even when so, he's yeah. wrong, he can do no wrong. <laughs> so if they've, got, if they've got fur, that's fine. Run around after them. But <laughs> Yeah, we, we just want to have this chat today because it's something that's important that we've been recognizing, haven't we, and sort of cross-checking ourselves quite a lot. And also having good friends where they can point out something to you because we've all got our blind spots, which will be a different coffee chat. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the things I appreciate about our friendship so much is we don't have to agree on everything. Um, we can have those conversations and, and, you know, it's absolutely fine. We appreciate them. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So I hope that helped you guys. If you guys are familiar with this concept or if you learned something or caught something about it that we didn't catch, let us know in the comment section below. Because even like I said, I consider the comment section to be actually part of the video too. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you're somewhere where there's sunshine, enjoy it. And if not, then we'll send some over. Create your own sunshine. See you soon, everyone. Bye. Bye.